Okay, let's get started. So this class, Human System Physiology. Physiology, we study how the body function. So we study in, in uh, the process to function, especially the function. In the whole class, you will learn how the uh, nervous system function, how the cardiovascular system, how the respiratory system function. And there are two major approaches to ask a question, teleological and mechanical. Teleological uh, is, is why. Like for example, you ask people why you need to breathe. And the teleological answer would be, if you don't breathe, you're going to die. And that's, that's a correct answer, but it's teleological. And in physiology, we focus on how, how it works. That's the mechanical approach. For example, if you ask people uh, why you have to work, uh, why you have to breathe, and the mechanical answer would be approach to how. It will, will be how, how it works. So the mechanical answer for, for breathing is, okay, you need to breathe, you need to create a concentration gradient and make the oxygen goes from the outside into your lung. And after the oxygen goes into your lung, it follows con the concentration gradient, which is a big word to say concentration difference. And the oxygen is going to move from your lung into your blood. And then your cardiovascular system take over, and the oxygen will be transported from your lung to your peripheral tissue. And when you go to the peripheral tissue, you still follow the concentration gradient and the oxygen will go from your blood, oxygenated blood, to your tissue. And eventually your cells, your body have trillion of cells. And these cells got those oxygen and they use glucose to produce ATP. And that's what makes them happy. So that's the whole approach of physiology. We focus on mechanical answer. And that's, that's how it works. Our first topic would, would be the cell membrane, membrane physiology. We're going to talk about how the membrane makes the molecule, transport the molecule from the outside to the inside. And every molecule, they follow the concentration gradient. You found in the previous slides, I talked about the concentration gradient. That's the concentration difference. And every molecule, they naturally want to go from the high concentration to the low concentration area. They follow the concentration gradient naturally. And if you put the molecule outside of the cells, we call them ECF, extracellular fluid. And it will not naturally want to go from ECF to the ICF, intracellular fluid. So inside, outside of the cells are all fluid. And you, because you want to follow the concentration gradient. However, the cell membrane make your life complicated because the cell membrane does not allow every molecule to go through. We call it semi-permeable. So some molecules can go through, others cannot go through. Let's look at the cell membrane. In the intro bio, you learned the cell membrane is mainly made of phospholipid. So they are made of this molecule. Phospholipid is one of the lipid. And they have the head, hydrophilic head. They like water. And they have two tails, hydrophobic tails. And because the cells inside outside are all water, so they have to turn the head, the hydrophilic one, facing the inside and facing the outside, and the tails hidden inside. So it's a double membrane structure. And the phospholipid, that's the main molecule created cell membrane. The cell membrane also have other uh, structures, like this one is uh, cholesterol. Cholesterol is the functions fill the gap of the phospholipid, uh, increase the the structure, make it stronger, make the cell membrane stronger. And these are the proteins. Proteins have different functions. Some of them, like this one, uh, can connect with the carbohydrate. Their function is cell recognition. So your immune system are able to identify that's your cell. Leave it alone. That's not your cell. Attack it. And it turns out it's those, uh, those carbohydrate proteins. And we also have some protein, they have a structure function, maintain the structure of the cell. And sometimes they connect with the cytoskeletal system, make the cell be able to move. And we also have the protein, their function is make the cells, molecules able to move in, move out of the cell. Like the channels and carrier proteins, they will be our main focus for this lecture. And you also have other, other uh, main proteins, their function is for receptor, like you release neurotransmitter. 
they're going to bind with the target cells. And on the cell membrane, the target cells have the reception. So they are all the functions of the, the protein. And this slide, it shows you those four basic functions of the cell membrane. First one is physical isolation. It's like your skin. So if you think you are the cell and your skin is the cell membrane. So first one is isolation. Identify what's inside, what's outside. It also be able to regulate exchange with the environment. The molecule able to move in, move out. The third one is communication. Uh, quickly, we're going to talk about the, the endocrine system, the nervous system. Both of them release the chemical molecules, uh, either the neurotransmitter or the hormones. And they need to bind with the target cells. The target cells have the reception. And the last one is support structure. The cell membrane is made of phospholipid. And if this molecule is made of lipid, like cholesterol, cholesterol-based molecule, and it's able to go through the cell membrane, use the simple diffusion. And uh, one example is the birth control patch. So inside the patch, you have sex hormones, mainly the female sex hormone, estrogen and progesterone, these two. And while you can take the pill or you can put the patch on the skin, it's still be able to go into your body. The reason is those sex hormones, they are steroid hormones. So they're made of steroid. Uh, they are, they're made of cholesterol. So it turns out that these hormones are able to use simple diffusion. No matter you, you take the pill or you just put the patch on the skin, they're able to go from the high concentration area. And it's here and go through the skin cells, go into your body, to the low concentration area. So you can, you can put the patch on the skin, and they're able to go into your body. And other molecules, they, they could not go through the cell membrane like that. So the cell membrane, the one function is, is able to regulate the molecule to move in or not to move in or to move out if it's higher uh, concentrated inside. So this is cell membrane, phospholipid structure, and there's the cholesterol, so you fill the gap. So any molecule that are made of cholesterol, those four ring structure, like steroid hormone, uh, they have no problem use simple diffusion, just go through the cell membrane from high to low area. And these slides tell you the cell membrane protein you have different kind of proteins. The first one, there will be our main focus, called the transport protein, because a lot of molecules, they just could not use simple diffusion, like steroid hormones go from high to low. They could not go through the phospholipid, and the cells still need them. So they need to move in, or sometimes they need to move out, and you need those transport proteins. So ions, and they're gonna use ion channel, and uh, bigger molecules, like uh, Glucose, they have to use glucose carrier, so they belong to this category. And the second one, structural protein, we don't focus too much of this part uh, in this class. Their, their, their function is to maintain the structure, or sometimes change the structure, so the cell are able to move. The third one, receptor, we'll talk about this one uh, in one to two weeks. Receptor protein, there will be a big topic. Like in your body, you have the endocrine systems, you have the nervous system. Both of them release the chemical molecule. And this chemical molecule need to bind with the receptor. So the target cells of the, of the neurotransmitter and the, the hormones have the receptors. And the, the, chem, the ligand, called the ligand, chemical molecule, when it binds with the receptor, the inside part will trigger some response so the cell will be activated. So this, this will be our uh, big topic in two weeks. The last one is enzyme. So enzymes, you learn that in the intro bio, it's able to lower the energy required for the chemical process to happen in, in low temperature. Like your body, you have a lot of digestive enzymes. They make the chemical process be able to happen in your room temperature. So you don't need to burn a fire uh, like the chemistry lab in your body and to make the chemical process to happen. So you have a lot of digestive enzymes, and that's their function. So we today we'll focus on this one, and in two weeks we'll talk about this one. So these are the functions of the membrane protein. 
and the molecule, how easily it can go through the cell membrane. Depends on a few things. First one, is this molecule lipid soluble? So we talk about uh, the, the steroid hormone. That's a good example because it's made of lipid and lipid like lipid. Phospholipid is another kind of lipid. So if the molecule is made of lipid or is lipid soluble, it can easily go through the cell membrane from high concentration to low concentration. And the second one is the size. A smaller molecule can run faster. So like the gas molecule, uh, it's, a, it's able to use simple diffusion, oxygen, CO2. It just use simple diffusion to go through the cell membrane. But bigger molecules like glucose, it, it need glucose carrier if you need this molecule to move through the cell membrane. The third one is charge. And the cell membrane, like non-charged, non-polar molecule. So small molecule, even though it's small, but if it's charged, it still have difficulty to go through the cell membrane. And a good example is ion like sodium ion, chloride ion. And these ions, they are very small. They only have one, one atom. But the problem, they are charged. So it turned out the charged molecule just won't be able to go through the cell membrane because the cell membrane like uncharged particle. So you need ion channels to make the molecule go through. And this provides a summary of the molecules, which one can go through, which one could not go through. So if it's a small gas molecule, it's small, it can use simple diffusion to go through. If it's a small uncharged polar molecule, urea, urea, uh, when we talk about osmolarity calculation, we're going we're gonna to use urea as an example because it's a penetrating particle. It just moves through the cell membrane, use simple diffusion. If it's steroid hormones, cholesterol, made of cholesterol, it can also use simple diffusion to go through the cell membrane. And all the others, big molecules, amino acid, glucose, nucleotide, and these charged particle ions. They just couldn't go through the cell membrane. And here's the problem. We need this. A lot of important molecules, they are nutrients, they are the building block for your cells, or they are ions. Your body needs them, electrolytes, and they couldn't go through the cell membrane. So the cells need to use helper to make them be able to go through the cell membrane. And that's why we're going to talk about the carriers, the ion channels. They will be our uh, next few slides. So, so far, this is the summary. A molecule needs to go through the cell membrane. Every molecule, if they need to move, yes, they are energy required. You need to give them energy. You need to give them something. Even though this molecule can go through the cell membrane by simple diffusion, you still need to give them energy. The energy will be the concentration gradient or will be the temperature, kinetic energy. You need to give them something. No energy, no movement. However, we're in the biology class. Does it require the bio biological energy, ATP? Does it require the ATP or not? It's a different story. If this movement does not require ATP, we call it a passive transport. If this move, movement, the cell required to use ATP to make this happen, that's the active transport. So that's how we define these two. So passive transport, that's the diffusion. Apparently the energy source will be the concentration gradient. So concentration gradient is a big word to say concentration difference. This molecule move from high to low. And two examples, simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion. So the simple diffusion uh, would be the gas molecule. They just move from high to low. Facilitated diffusion are the molecules that go through the cell membrane still from high to low because no ATP required, but they require something to help them. That's why we call it facilitated diffusion. So uh, we'll focus on this part. We'll focus on this part first. Then we'll talk about those uh, Active transport require ATP1. Okay, let's take a short break.